Clock off. Right. Good evening. This is the May 11, 2021 meeting of the Groton Planning and Zoning Commission. Jeff Richards, the chair. Staff tonight is Diane Glenboski and Deb Jones. <clears throat> there is opportunity for the public to address the commission under public communications. You will have to raise your virtual hand, and I think everybody knows by now how to do that on Zoom. Okay, so I'll call the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. First item is roll call. You don't see Barbara, is she? Barbara's here. Oh, is she? I don't see her on the thing. She must be at the end. Okay, so we have a, everyone, all our regular members are here. So we have a quorum. First uh, item on the agenda is approval of minutes of uh, previous meetings. So I'll make a motion to approve the uh, minutes of the April 20th special meeting. Is there a second? Second. Does anyone have any corrections to the meeting minutes? I didn't do not. No one has anything. We'll vote on the approval of the minutes for April 20th as written. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. I'll make a mo <laughs> motion to approve the minutes of uh, the April 27th meeting. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Does anyone have any corrections to the minutes? I do not. I had, maybe it's more of a question, but on, on uh, page two of the minutes, page eight in the, in the handout, down toward the middle of the page on a paragraph that starts with uh, Penny Miller. They use an abbreviation of 10 DUs per acre. I don't know what a DU is. Is there a abbreviation? Is that supposed to mean something? Or dwelling I think unit. it's probably units. Dwelling units. Can it be spelled out? Because it's not a, a normal abbreviation, <laughs> is it? Hmm? It is in the planner world. Yep. Is it? It is, but we can spell it out. Well, unless... Spell out, spell out the first time. Exactly. That's the first right. time. That's that's well, it's, all, it's used two or three times. Yeah. Or you could put an asterisk there and just put it at the bottom of the page. <laughs> if it's easier to do that as a footnote, I don't care. But if you hadn't been at the meeting, I don't, it might be confusing then. Hmm? As to what it was. Does anyone have anything else? If not, then we'll vote on the motion to approve the uh, minutes of April 27th as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Next, uh, public communications. Does anyone on the commission have any communications to identify? I had a few. I received uh, an email from George Marshall who lived in uh, Noank on Elm Street and he was concerned on where things stood on uh, the oral school development and was concerned also that it, there was nothing on the planning in zoning commission uh, website that indicated a status. So I wrote back to him and explained where things stood on that. I also received one, uh, another email forwarded by uh, Betsy McCausher this afternoon from Beth Tillman to express concern and this, I guess, will get out to everybody concerned with uh, using a floating zone for 
of oral school development. And I received an email from uh, John Reiner this afternoon regarding Mystic uh, Parking Study presentation on May 27th. I don't know if everybody got a copy of that or not. I already signed up for it. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, Very but, positive. Mm -hmm. Jeff, can I bring up my point here, or should I do that in, in the actual commission no, reports? Under the uh, report of the commission. Got it. Thank this you. This is just for communications that might impact the thank you. The progress of the meeting, you know, business part. Sure. Uh, does you. staff have any communications other than the one that was attached to our agenda? Uh, no, um, I will note that you have periodically received communications from us forwarded on from members of the public about the Mystic Ed Center. Typically, we are we're holding them all until each Friday, so we can just send one email to you guys. Um, we do get them, you know, throughout the week. But you'll just be getting them on Fridays. Okay, and we have this uh, Steinberg email. Should we get this added to the agenda for under new business or, or? If you want to, if you want to talk about it, sure. Hmm? Well, I think we should talk mm -hmm. about it. Sure. So I don't know, we have to take action on it now, but I mean, we should talk about it to see if we want to take action. Sure, uh, yeah, go ahead and, and if, if you so choose, make a motion to uh, add it to new business and. Yeah. Yeah, you need to suspend the rules to add it to the agenda. Mm -hmm. Well, do people want to add it? Hmm? Hmm? I, I don't know. Did, is, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. that's yeah. fine. Yeah, no, because uh, I have some notes about it. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll make a motion then to add the uh, Steinberg email to to uh, the new business section. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? I would second that. There's no discussion. I'll vote on the motion. All those in favor of adding the uh, Steenberg subject of the Steenberg email to new business, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Add that. Okay, uh, next item is uh, site under site plan. Oh, unless public, does anyone, I guess we gotta see if anyone in the public wishes to address us tonight. Is there anyone you see that? Uh, there are a couple of folks, yep. Um, so let me call them and out. Recognize them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, the first one is Roseanne Kutowski. Good evening, everyone. Um, before I start, I was wondering um, if you could forward me a copy of the George Marshall um, email that was just explained uh, that talked about where, quote, things stood regarding the Mystic Oral School mega development. And I also um, have a question before I start. What is this Steinberg email in regard to? It's... Uh... Well, we'll talk about it later. It regards the sidewalk uh, construction. Oh. oh, sidewalk construction. Okay. All right. Thank you. And um, Roseanne Katowski, 24 Inn Avenue, RTM District 5. At the last uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, I asked the commission some questions regarding the current, current Mystic Oral School regulations rewrite process. I also followed up by forwarding the questions to staff to send to the commission and I am waiting for your response. Also, I'd I would like to confirm that the commission received the May 3rd, 2021 Attorney McCausher letter regarding additional developer criminal history, as well as the town of Groton non-compliance and non-enforcement of the development agreement. It is important that the Planning and Zoning Commission is aware of these facts. Last week, I also sent the Planning and Zoning Commission the May 4th, 2021 Town of Groton partial FOI response regarding the Mystic Education Center review panel initial reviews. 
So from what Deb Jones just told everybody, it looks like you got everything on Friday. So thank you, Deb, for that. Um, regarding the panel reviews, there were four Town of Broughton staff, four State of Connecticut staff, and two town counselors on the selection committee for the Mystic Oral School mega development. Why was this information not in the public record? It had to be obtained through freedom of information. Why does town staff continue to withhold documents regarding the Mystic Oral School mega development from the public? Hopefully, as the Planning and Zoning Commission reviews the panel initial reviews, you will wonder, as I do, how Respler was chosen. The comments by the evaluators regarding the Respler project, in my humble opinion, are reasons not to choose Respler. Some examples. Evaluator one noted that Respler would require a $165,160,000 construction loan. Three, $33 million in TIF money. Yes, that's million with an M. And staff technical assistance and cooperation, which I don't agree with at all. Evaluator two had no overall comments. Evaluator three noted, who is financing construction loan? Break into phases, more reasonable. Regarding phases, I would like to mention the following. It's a fact that there is no mention of phases in the development agreement with the town and wrestler. The fact that town staff, wrestler, and counselors are mentioning fa phases proves that they have not read the development um, agreement. Evaluator four noted, TIF request seems excessive. Requirement that town manage pool raises questions and concerns, but potentially also a little leverage. I would like to mention here, as we all know, the pool has turned out to be the carrot for the project. Back to evaluator four. Company is lowballing its ability to raise financing. Concern that town of Groton not be taken advantage of by wrestler. One dollar to state is obviously low for the Mystic Oral School property. Evaluator five noted, wants to build soccer lacrosse fields, outdoor basketball courts, baseball field on 30 acres of conservation land. Absolutely not permitted. Evaluator six noted, just quoted rest for talking points. Evaluator seven noted, repair costs to rec center seem low, lacks diversity of housing options. Letter of interest only, um, letter of interest only for evidence to support project financing. So that's important to note. One time complete completion of past project, on time completion of past projects not addressed, also important. Multi purpose field location accessibility is poor for residents. Evaluator eight. Cheerleading for the project, these must be Bronx comments. Evaluator nine had no overall comments. Evaluator 10 had no overall comments. This is interesting and relevant information regarding the developer selection process that should never have been withheld from the public, which leads to the question, what else is being withheld from the public? Given the amount of information town staff has withheld from the public that had to be obtained through freedom of information, it seems like a reasonable question to ask. At the last Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, I asked if there is a possibility of the commission, not staff, <coughs> holding an informal workshop with the concerned citizens. The purpose would be to answer questions regarding where the commission is in the process, the zoning regulations rewrite, and what to expect moving forward. I realize this request is outside of normal procedure, but there are so many questions and to date there have been no answers. Hopefully the Planning and Zoning Commission will seriously consider my request for a workshop with the commission and concerned residents to answer questions. As the Planning and Zoning Commission moves forward with the regulation rewrite and the development of the master plan, please bear in mind that the developer has a criminal record, including pleading guilty to both perjury and bribing officials among other crimes. As a concerned resident, it is difficult to believe anything presented or stated by the developer. Again, I want to state that I cringe at the thought that town staff signed a development agreement 
with a criminal whose crimes that he pled guilty to and was convicted of are directly related to his profession. Thank you for your time and I look forward to hearing back from the commission regarding the answers to my questions and a date for a workshop with the concerned residents. Thank you very much. Great, right, thank you. <clears throat> uh, let's see, um, Robert Welt. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good evening, Robert Welt, 18 Boulder Court Mystic. I have had time for a quick review of the Horsley Witten Group report of January 15th. My understanding was that such a report was supposed to guide the commission in its deliberations as to the use of the oral school property in general, not in response to one developer's plans. However, this report mentions restless concerns and questions more than once. I didn't see where it mentioned neighbors' concerns and questions. Two items quickly caught my eye. In section 6.5-6.a point, it mentions building heights no more than 120 feet. The only structure that should be 120 feet tall in a rural area is a grain silo. Also, under the Planning and Zoning Commission action items, number 16, historic actions, apparently no one has responsibility. It would seem that in such a site as the oral school, some archeological investigation should take place before any demolition and or building commences. Thank you for listening to my concern. Good evening. Thank you. Um, let me see, uh, Beth. Good evening, I'm Glenda Tillman, 925 River Road. I'm coming before you for the first time to express my concerns about the Mr. Mystic Oral School project in its current state. I refer back in my letter to you of this afternoon to the 2016 Mystic Ed Center report final 1.12.16 in a PDF form. In that, it specifically indicates that all roadways would have to be rebuilt and brought up to town standards for the site to be redeveloped or reused. It should also be noted that Cow Hill Road is a rural residential street, not designed to handle major automobile traffic. On page 10, when we are on the locational factors, it says the immediate area is a quiet residential neighborhood, which means certain uses, especially high traffic volume inducing uses, will be incompatible with the surrounding properties. Specifically uses that would induce new truck traffic are especially problematic. The site is not located adjacent to any major roads and has poor visibility which decreases the viability of many commercial uses that rely on foot traffic and visibility for major transportation corridors. Access to the site is limited to low volume residential streets. Local roads leading to the site are poorly maintained and in need of repair. I think this more than anything to me bespeaks the fact that the plan as outlined is too large and too incompatible with the area. I would very much like to have the commission at some point address to the residents what the actual ramifications and repercussions are to the granting of a floating zone, which appears to be what is being proposed for the changes for this property. My understanding of floating zones is that they can spread out to other areas and have undesired and unintended consequences. So I would like very much to know if my reading of floating zone is incorrect and what your response to my query would be. I also think it would be a very good thing to have an open informational session as to where we are in the planning and zoning aspects of this project what the steps are to get to a new zone and 
what the commission's thoughts are on this topic. Thank you very much for listening to me. I appreciate it. And thank you for your work for the town. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Becca Welt. Okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Becca Welt from 32 Boulder Court. Um, do you ever feel like we're living in a Hallmark movie? The mercenary big city developer has come to build a metropolis in the midst of our small coastal village. The town council has been seduced by the rosy fantasies spun by the public relations team and most support it wholeheartedly. The longtime residents are fighting back as best they can, but can they win against a deep pocketed businessman who has lawyers on speed dial? They can. They can because in every good Hallmark movie, not only is there a romance, there is also a happy ending because the hero saves the day guess who the hero is in this movie? It's the Planning and Zoning Commission. You have not been bamboozled by the sweet talk of the developer and his public relations firm. You know that changing the zoning for the oral school will lead to clear cutting of trees and immense noise, air, and water pollution. You know that traffic in Mystic is already dreadful, especially in the summer, and you are not foolish enough to believe in the fairy tale of hundreds of millennials on bicycles and a water taxi to nowhere. When you're considering making zoning changes for the oral school, I ask you to consider this. RU80 is appropriate for a quiet neighborhood with narrow twisting roads lined by old stone walls, a neighborhood where children can play safely. Let that remain in place and we'll have our happy ending. Thank you. Uh, Janet Mayer. Sorry, Elizabeth Nato, hit the wrong one. Um, Elizabeth Nato. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Yeah, let me, okay, so uh, let's let try Janet Mayer. There we go. Good evening, Janet Mayer, 88 Ann Avenue, Mystic, Connecticut. Thank you again so much for the opportunity to speak. When I first heard about the size of the Mystic River Bluffs proposal, I was immediately against it. I knew it would increase traffic on Cow Hill to a dangerous level, possibly affect our water or sewer, and I did not want blasting near my home, not in my backyard. But as I learned more about the, propo the proposed development, which I believe is equal to over 40% of the present population of Mystic, I realized that this would impact the entire town and our way of life. Things like Allen Street, Route 1, Sandy Hollow, downtown parking, noise, lights, possibly having to limit the numbers of people that go to the Eastern Point Beach concerts, the safety of our Route 95 on and off ramps, our ability to park at Haley Farm or Pequot Woods to take a walk. I believe all those would be affected. We do not have sidewalks the, or the amount of parking or the facilities of a city. We're here in the country with, with you know, what we've got. And I already know people who no longer come to Mystic because it's way too busy for them now. The cost to the town for this project in terms of needed infrastructure are still unknown. Still no risk analysis as far as we've seen. Of course, again, as people in the last um, few speakers have said, we're not really getting much information despite requests um, so, you know, we feel, we feel like this is just coming on and, and it's, we're being bombarded with it. Um, but I do believe these costs are going to be extremely high with unforeseen costs ar arising in the future. And the risk seems even greater given the developer's background, which you have now heard about. Most of all, the previous research on what would be appropriate for this site and the Groton planning and conservation documents 
do not appear to support this document. I mean, this development. While I appreciate the initial enthusiasm for this proposal, this development is far too massive for the area and what would likely have far reaching negative impacts on the entire mystic community, both in terms of quality life of life and future expenses to our taxpayers. And I just wanna say that the, I thought my, the people who uh, spoke previously said it really well. I have all those same concerns and I too am really looking forward um, to seeing more information and, and having some outreach um, in these you know, on this issue. We're all kind of just grabbing things as we can and trying to put this together and figure out what's coming. And it's it's been really difficult and we're very, very concerned. But I, I thank you so much for your time and I appreciate you listening to me for the last few weeks. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, <clears throat> uh, Genevieve Cerf. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me speak. My name is Genevieve Cerf. Um, I'm um, living now at Six Pearl Street in Mystic, um, where I moved from Grant Long Point. And I've just recently become aware uh, of what is going on with the Mystic Oral School and trying to get up to speed with uh, all the documentation, uh, which I must say Roseanne Katowski has been very diligent in accumulating and obtaining. Um, and it is a bit shocking to me that she has had to put in so many FOIA requests to get what I consider basic documentation about what has been going on with the planning for this site. Um, I don't haven't read all the documentation. I haven't read the uh, planning and zoning changes that you are, are suggesting on making. I'm very much for smart growth and I realize it's been 20 years since I've, I've been involved in town projects, starting with my association with Groton Open Space Association, when we used to give you all a lot of trouble. Um, and then um, going on with my, um, I was on the committee to, to further, uh, basically to try to rehabilitate downtown Groton, which as Jim Furlong recently pointed in his editorial for the New London Day, downtown Groton is where we should be doing this. I always, in my mind side, I still imagine downtown Groton with some apartments for young people, for retired people such as myself, which is why I moved into a little apartment here in Mystic, because I enjoy being um, in the center of action. I can understand the urge to try to build this little village up in the Mystic Oral School. But I have to tell you, when I drove up there yesterday, up this tiny road where there were uh, property owners stone walls, uh, basically preventing the road from being widened in any way. I just couldn't even imagine, you know, trucks of any kind going up there. Now I hear there's plans for this other access route, but by the time I got to the top of the hill and I saw the buildings, it reminded me of the Noank School, which was much, much smaller in size and took a million dollars basically to, to tear down the Noank School and make it an appropriate even site for building anything else. I, this project also reminded me with the town's commitment um, to putting in more infrastructure, uh, the plan for the Flanders Road infrastructure to put water and sewer um, up Flanders Road, which was gonna cost $10 million in which I remember Councillor Mick O'Bairn uh, spent a lot of time proving that we would never make that money back. I'm extremely concerned about the fact that the town is plunging into this and making all kinds of promises without any numbers. I'm extremely concerned that the state has agreed to sell the property to this developer without any of these really critical things in place, um, especially to a developer, which we now know um, doesn't have um, a, too good a relationship with morality, ethics, roles, et cetera. So all these things, I'm just making this preliminary statement because I intend to really dig into uh, what's been going on. But um, literally all my nightmares of every committee that I've joined, and believe me, I joined all of them um, in, my, in my years as, um, as a, on the RTM and on the town council. 
Um, I'm basically seeing all these nightmares come back and I really don't see uh, that it's been thought through. I'm actually really kind of shocked. I, I have to say in the Mark Ofinger's days, he would dot his I's and cross his T's. We would never have this many questions on the table. You know, we may not always have agreed with him, but you know, when we asked how much it was gonna cost the town for infrastructure, he would know and pretty much he would give us the correct answer. So I'm, I'm really, I'm hoping that you all take to all this into account. It's not just your, little, your changes, which are already rather large to the planning and zoning rules, but it's like the Walmart super center that we also fought successfully. It's what it's gonna to do to the entire town and to our finances. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, that's it. That's it. So we can get to the real McCoy. There you go. <laughs> Good. All right. So our next uh, our action first action item is uh, site plan SIT 21-07 Real McCoy Restaurant and Bar 15 Water Street. The applicant would like to make his pr or presentation. Good evening. Uh, just give me a second. I just got let in. So, um, well, is there anybody else here with you that we need to promote? Yeah, I, I think uh, Bailey Pryor is here. I don't know if he's on by phone. Yep, I see him. Hold right. on. And Greg Fettis um, is here, although he said he was having a lot of trouble with the Zoom tonight. He might be calling in. So, I don't know if. He's okay. I, yeah, I do not see Greg Fettis, but there is a, a call. Um, uh, 6097, I think is the last. Greg says he's here by phone. Okay, well, he's the only one, so. Okay. Yep, that's, I guess that's him. Okay. Great. There we go. <clears throat> we all set? I think so, I think that, that's Perfect. all of your folks. Yep, yep absolutely. Uh, good evening, uh, for the record tonight, uh, my name is Bill Sweeney. I'm a partner and a land use attorney with the law firm of Tobin Carberry in New London, Connecticut. My address is 43 Broad Street in that city. Uh, it's certainly a pleasure to be here once again um, uh, before you. Uh, tonight, I'm appearing on behalf of Real McCoy Spirits, which is a Connecticut corporation, uh, which has sum submitted a site plan application to the commission to expand the existing restaurant space within the basement of the Emporium building at 15 Water Street in Mystic to encompass the first floor of that building as well. Uh, joining me tonight, as I mentioned, is Bailey Pryor. Uh, you can see him on the screen. Uh, Bailey is the founder and CEO of Real McCoy Spirits. Uh, he's also, and I think this is important, a lifelong Mystic resident. Um, and uh, if you have any specific questions about his company or his background, he's, he's available tonight as well. Uh, Greg Fettis is also here on the phone. Uh, with FedEx Engineering. Uh, from our perspective, the application before you tonight is very simple and straightforward, um, but we do wanna provide you a bit of background and share with you our site plan for this expanded restaurant use. Uh, Real McCoy Spirits was founded almost a decade ago. It's named after the legendary rum runner, Bill McCoy, who operated in the Caribbean and off the coast of New York during Prohibition. Um, using traditional Barbados recipes, uh, Bailey has successfully man manufactured a variety of high-end rums, similar to what Bill McCoy produced over a century ago, uh, which have earned widespread acclaim here in the United States and outside of this country, and a number of prestigious awards. Uh, in fact, uh, Real McCoy Spirits just opened a physical distillery here in Connecticut in the town of Stonington on Togawonk Road. Um, but Bailey, being a lifelong Mystic resident over on the Groton side, uh, he's always had a vision of creating a unique destination dining experience here in Mystic. And now with the success, just the widespread success of his distillery, uh, a dining experience, a restaurant that could showcase his distilled spirits and the rum cocktails that uh, you can make with his, uh, with his products. Um, to that end, Real McCoy Spirits has recently entered into a purchase agreement 
uh, to acquire the Emporium building at 15 Water Street from the Mystic Art Association. Uh, our client intends to relocate, reopen the vacant restaurant space in the basement of that building. Um, you may remember that was the uh, prior, one of the prior locations for prior tucks uh, and then the Water Street Tavern. Uh, it's currently closed and vacant. Um, but he would also, in addition to reopening that, would expand the restaurant to the next level of the building, the first floor, uh, which is currently gallery space. The new restaurant will offer full course meals and fine dining, as well as alcoholic beverage service, including, as I said, showcasing real McCoy products. As you're aware, um, 15 Water Street in the Emporium building is located in the Mystic Downtown District where standard restaurants are permitted uses. And while the application that we have before you tonight does not include any changes whatsoever to the exterior of the building, nor does it propose any significant site work or site changes to the uh, property, planning staff did ask us to submit a site plan application to you due to the fact that we are expanding the use of the restaurant within the building, along with interior renovations, uh, and there are two new easements that are being established between this property and the remaining land of the Mystic Art Association. Uh, so if it's okay with the chairman and the commission, I'd like to just share at this point, the site plan. Uh, Deb, is that something that you do or can I do that? Um, if you have the ability to do it, feel free to, and otherwise we can. Okay, I will do it then. <clears throat> I was at a public hearing the other night in New London and, and the, sh the screen sharing wasn't working so well, but I, so I just want to check, can everybody see the site plan uh, that's on the screen in front of you? Yes. yes. All right. And I'll try to zoom in if, if, if people need to see anything in, in greater detail. Um, we have a single sheet site plan. Um, and so we've got sort of on the left side of the drawing, we have the actual layout of this lot. And on the right side of the, of the property, we've got some uh, easement plans and some interior renovation um, uh, designs, some layout, floor plan layouts, including parking calculations as well. So I'll try to jump between the, these, these items as I describe the project. As I explained before, um, there are no significant changes whatsoever to the exterior of the building or the site. Um, it will look identical to what is there today. That historic, architecturally appropriate and compatible building will remain as is. Uh, we do intend to change the signage on the front of the building um, that currently reads Mystic Museum of Art. Uh, we don't have a name for the restaurant selected yet, but we will choose a name that's compatible with the Real McCoy uh, label and something and we will design a sign and seek zoning approvals for a sign that respects that character uh, of the building as we move forward with the project. Access for the project remains as is off of Water Street and through an easement over um, the adjacent property of the South, that's the Randall Wharf uh, property. Um, there are seven dedicated parking spaces for the Emporium building, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, these seven spaces are located partially on the property itself. You can see the property lines are here in the dark. dark. And they also extend the parking spaces, portions of the parking uh, spaces extend uh, onto the adjacent Randall Wharf property. There is an existing easement shown over here on the site plan, uh, which is existing and has been pre-existing and runs with the property um, that allows us to continue to use those spaces. In addition, there's four more spaces that we are going to be able to be dedicated uh, for the uh, property. These four spaces are already dedicated under the existing Planning and Zoning Commission approvals for um, 15 Water Street. They're actually on another parcel owned by the Mystic Art Association, but as part of our purchase agreement to purchase 15 Water Street, we will be getting an easement over these four spaces for use by this building. Um, there is also an existing dumpster pad located here that's also located on Mystic uh, uh, remaining land of the Mystic Art Association. This is the existing dumpster pan that had that has always served this building. There's actually a walkway that leads from the building to that dumpster pad. And we will be getting as part of the purchase of this property, a perpetual easement to that trash enclosure area as well. We've drafted uh, the easements um, uh, for both the four parking spaces and the trash enclosure, and we, which will be executed at closing. And we've submitted that to your staff 
uh, with, for review with our application. The only other exterior change to the site, and it's not nothing structural, is um, there are a couple laundry bins that are stored in this alleyway between uh, the Oyster Club and 15 uh, Water Street. Um, your staff asked us to relocate these laundry bins and we're now putting them behind a fence over here in the northeast uh, corner of the property. Um, that is so that we can maintain handicap access through this alleyway, this ramp that comes up and enters the building here. And that allows us handicap accessible access to the first floor of the building where we'll be expanding the restaurant. We have, as you know, if you've ever visited this site, you know that there is already handicapped access through a series of ramps to the lower basement level. And that's shown right here on the plan that'll remain in place. Uh, bottom line is both the lower and upper levels of the restaurant, the basement and first floors of the building will have unobstructed ADA accessible access for patrons to the restaurant. That's important to the town, it's important to us. And by moving these laundry bins, we make sure that this stays clear and accessible uh, for the project. Um, shifting to interior renovations, and I'm gonna try to just to zoom in a little bit to maybe help and maybe make this a little bit more visible for everybody. We have the basement floor plan here and we have the first floor floor plan here. On the lower basement level, that's the area that's already uh, was, you know, was fire tucks in the Water Street Tavern. Um, we are gonna be doing interior renovations. The lower basement level will contain seating for 45. There'll be 37, what we would call standard restaurant seats. And we're showing a, a proposed um, table configuration. We will also have eight seats at a bar um, that will be located at the lower level. Uh, the kitchen is located on that level as, as well as a, a restroom uh, as well, uh, which is handicapped accessible. Uh, and then we have stairs leading up to the uh, first floor. If we move to the first floor, um, just one other thing, um, when we do do the kitchen renovations, we will be installing a new grease trap um, for the facility, um, uh, which is compliant with uh, public health code. And all of the renovations throughout both the basement and the first floor will be consistent and compliant with building and fire codes. On the first floor, uh, we have seating for 58 um, within the uh, restaurant area, 50 standard restaurant seats. And again, we're showing a proposed table configuration. We also have eight additional bar seats. So we actually have two bars, one in the lower level, one in the upper level. And that makes sense because we're really trying to showcase some of these um, unique custom locally distilled spirits um, that we're going to be offering um, uh, for patrons. We also have restroom uh, on this level. We've got a back office room as well. Um, and we have a walk-in cooler on this level, along with a foyer where the main entrance to the building uh, will still provide access and there'll be sort of a, an entry and a greeting area for, um, for customers and patrons coming in. From a parking perspective, um, we do have um, parking calculations on our plan. Um, we, there are um, existing residential apartments, uh, three of them on the upper level, the third floor of the building. They are, pre they are already approved, they're in existence, and they are staying in that uh, location and in that configuration. Um, and then What's effectively happening is the first floor, which is currently um, gallery space, is being converted um, to a standard restaurant with the bar or drinking establishment area. We're doing that for both the basement and the, and the first floor. Um, by the calculations, uh, the minimum parking spaces demanded for this use uh, calculates out to just under 33 parking spaces. We need to provide 33. Um, we're providing the 11 that I showed on the site plan previously, and we have asked um, to utilize the parking validation program, which is, we're eligible for in the um, Mystic Downtown District for the remainder. We've also noted that on the plan that we'll be using the validation program, we have to comply with the validation program in terms of advertising uh, it in, in the place and, and directing our patrons uh, to utilize it. Um, planning staff also um, requested um, that we provide written narrative responses to the site plan and Mystic Downtown District objectives 
that are outlined in your regulations. I believe that was submitted in your staff packet. I think you have a copy of those. Um, again, because we're not making any significant exterior changes to the building or to the site itself, many of those objectives are really not applicable um, or the responses are not applicable because it's the existing condition. Um, and we aren't proposing any changes to those, but we just do want to highlight a few that we think are important as you consider our application tonight. Um, first and foremost, I think your plan of conservation and development encourages exactly this type of uh, reuse uh, of existing buildings in the Mystic area. Um, I think um, especially when you have a historical building, I believe this building was built originally in 1859, I think it is architecturally um, attractive and compatible with the historic nature of downtown and we're gonna preserve that. And so I think um, the reuse of this building, um, just expanding the restaurant um, uh, meets and honors that tenant of your POCD. Uh, as again, standard restaurants are permitted uses uh, in the Mystic Downtown District. Uh, they're extremely common uh, in the surrounding neighborhood. They're part of the downtown fabric. They're one of the reasons Mystic is such a great place um, to live around and to, and to visit. Um, and this location obviously will continue to serve the needs of both residents and visitors of the Mystic area, which is one of the tenants for the Mystic downtown district. Um, the property itself, as you can see, is not waterfront property. Um, uh, and there is no, so there's no public access issues, um, but there are no building additions. We're not putting anything else up. We're not expanding. We're not elevating the building or putting another story on the building. So there's really no concern with uh, negatively impacting the existing public view sheds to the river that may exist. Um, I think I want to just reiterate this site has successfully operated in the past uh, for restaurant use and the expansion of the restaurant use to the first floor of the building poses no impacts to the overall site layout or how the site functions fundamentally. Uh, we don't think there's any adverse impacts whatsoever to the neighborhood or the community. Uh, most importantly though, um, this is an application by a longtime Mystic resident who wants to showcase his successful business in downtown Mystic to create a unique destination, a dining experience that is something special. It's not a chain restaurant or anything like that is something unique. It's a one of a kind type of, uh, of facility. It will positively contribute to the character of Mystic uh, by reutilizing and, and this um, historic and architecturally uh, valuable building with an economically viable use. And I think that uh, meets every, checks every box in the plan of conservation and development. Um, so again, this is a site plan application. It's not a special permit, um, but um, I think um, this is clearly a permitted use. We've, we believe we've addressed all of your staff's comments at this point. We've provided all the documentation they've requested. And so um, we certainly would um, uh, be pleased if you would entertain action on this application this evening. Mr. Pryor, myself, and Mr. Fettis are available if you have any specific questions uh, about our proposal. Thank you. All right, thank you. So I'll turn it over to uh, staff for their presentation. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, we did want to, um, as Mr. Sweeney said, there is really no change to the actual building. Um, we did want a site plan mainly because the they were buying the property and it was no longer going to be under the um, ownership of the Mystic Art Association, which controlled some of the parking spaces and also the trash enclosure area. So we wanted to make sure that they had those appropriate easements in place when this um, when the site plan gets recorded. And then also the other thing was we wanted to make sure that they had they would maintain that handicap access to the first floor. Um, so many times in in Mystic with these older buildings, they either don't have handicap access or can't provide handicap access. So if we wanted to make sure we wouldn't lose that handicap access to the first floor. And I think the applicant has addressed that appropriately um, in this case. Uh, and the only other thing was um, they are, they do have the 11 parking spaces 
Three of them are actually signed for the um, residential units, and I'm assuming they will keep those signs um, in place so that each of the residential units has a, an assigned parking space. And then the other ones um, will be for the um, either the employees or the users of, of the restaurant. And then the other um, thing we want to make sure is that they would participate in the validation program and to make sure that you know everything that's required by the zoning regulations are um, are in place when the when the use gets started. So those are the only things. Other than that, um, we have a, a a motion, a draft motion. Um, but if we can go through the the commission, if they have any. Um, questions before we put up the motion. Well, that's what I'd like to do is if you're, you're complete, Diane, we'll go through the commission to make sure that there are no open questions in there. Okay. And then uh, go over the motion. So I'll <clears throat> go down in our order of our, I'll start with you, Mike. I think he's muted. Mike, are you? Kane, are you there? Muted. Hmm? Mike's muted. Can you unmute yourself, Mike? If not, I'll skip. There that. we go. Oh, there you there go. go. Are you done Sorry. with dinner? No, with my screen, I'm screen sharing, so I lost my. Oh. Um, I just want to say it seems pretty straightforward. This doesn't seem too complicated. Uh, is uh, that door that's the handicapped door on the west side, is that a new door or is that existing? Existing. It is, okay. Yep. And I remember when we did this application previously and there were some uh, questions. I, I'd wanna, is there still a bike rack on this site or will there be one? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know, Greg, are you, is there a bike rack on this, on this site? It was mostly a concern the last time because of the residential units. Yeah, it, it came up. I remember that when we were looking at it. Um, Greg, or, Greg Fettis, are you on? And can you answer that question? It's okay. It can be a technical item if you if sure. staff feels comfortable with that. I just want to make sure that it because sometimes those things go away. You know, they'll be there and then they disappear and then they're not put back. Yeah, and I remember when we were talking, when, when I was reviewing the original, the previous site plan, there was some note on that. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's certainly that could be a technical item that we work with, um, with staff. I think staff's um, draft motion um, has sort of a catch-all at the end that, that we have to resolve um, any um, technical items. So I, I know the town's desire to try to have it bike racks available. And, and certainly I, I'm sure we can work with you on that point to try to resolve that. That's, those are my only concerns. Thank you. Okay. All right. Alzad, do you ha have anything? Uh, any yeah, I just have a, a couple of things. So I know it's, a, since it was a gallery upstairs, since it was a separate business, I'm just wondering functionally, how does the upstairs now work? So is the main entrance, the basement, what, how, how does this work now? Bailey, do you want to talk operationally about how you, you introduce yourself to the commission and just talk operationally how you envision this uh, working between the different levels? Sure. Uh, my name is Bailey Pryor. I live at 35 Pearl Street in Mystic. Um, the, the, the upstairs, you know, the first floor is going to be the main entrance, and that's where we'll have sort of the greeting area. The, the maitre d' would be in that location. Uh, so people would come into that spot and, and primarily um, from there you would go um, either, you know, be escorted to your table at the, on the first floor or be brought downstairs. Of course, we do have the downstairs um, access space for handicapped uh, folks that want to go down into that part of the, of the building. Um, but primarily we kind of focus the whole thing from the first floor. And so that's our, that's our plan right now. Okay, so if I was approaching this thing me on crutches and my friend in a wheelchair and we show up, what would we do? 
Um, well, the, there's the handicap access on the first floor is the existing handicap ramp that goes into the existing door um, that was established for the art center. Is there a doorbell um, on that? Is how, how do you know I'm there? Um, well, you walk up to the front door there and we could, we could put a doorbell there or they could just go up the ramp and come inside at that stage. And, and so from in that space, uh, we can do the automatic door. You press the button and the door opens up. Um, you know, the, the, there were certain aspects to the, to the design that were technical that we, we figured we would um, update, which d currently, you know, uh, don't exist, but something that we could add to the, the building to make it more accessible. But it would be uh, easy access right up that existing ramp. And then from there, you would enter and you'd be right there on the first floor. And so, as you can see from the layout, it's, it's um, you know, right by the bar area. There's a handicap accessible zone right into the first floor. Similarly, if you wanted to go down to the, the basement level, um, same thing, you would, you would come in and report you know, at, at the front, or you could come down to the basement and it's the same kind of thing. You press the button and the access door opens and, and you come. But it, it was you know, the, the same issues, the same questions would have existed previously for the, for the art center, for their gallery events that would have previously existed for the, the two restaurants that existed in the first, or, or sorry, down in the basement area um that had been there for i don't know a decade or so so you know there's no real change to the the uh, the operation of how the space would work we uh, wouldn't try to make it I mean, when it was just the basement then that was the door and if i if we wheeled ourselves down to there we could get into that door and that was it so that's that was fine and you could and still do that today the first you floor still, you could still it's a little different that's why i'm that's why i'm asking so it might take some more thought is because where that the existing foyer door is, is not accessible. I mean, it's, it hasn't been for a hundred years and it's not accessible now. So the idea was you go back down the ramp and you ring the buzzer, knock on the door, call on your phone. Some, there has to be some process that when it was just a gallery, wasn't as big a deal because there was a show happening. It was, a, it was something special happening, not a constant flow of patrons. One thing that Diane put in her suggested motion conditions was to put a sign, and Diane, you might want to comment on this, was to put signage uh, on the corner of the building, you know, directing people to this handicapped accessible entrance as well. So I think, you know, that's something that we certainly think is a good idea and we're, we're amenable to, and we're amenable to all of Diane's uh, conditions that she put forward, but I thought that was a good idea. Uh, and certainly, you know, there is a little bit of, of particularly for people who visit it, this place um, on a regular basis, there'll be a little bit of education and just getting used to how it works. Um, but I, I think your suggestions are good ones, and, and we certainly will look at that in terms of operationally because, you know, we were sort of happy that or we thought it was a real selling point that if you were disabled, it wasn't as if you were limited to one floor. You could eat on either floor. You don't have to get relegated to the basement um, that you could actually you do the restaurant in, on either level. And, and, and I know, as Diane said, there are some places in this area that don't have that level of accessibility, or if you are uh, challenged, you are limited to certain areas of, of, a, of, a, of a, an establishment. Yeah. No, but here, I, th I think you do have the opportunity for it, so long as it's part of a technical item that allows you to get to that upstairs floor and push a button that lets the maitre d' know you're there. Sure. Because you, you can't get to the foyer. Yeah, so. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we'd be happy to do something like that. I'm sure we All could right. work something out. All right. Another one is not, it's actually not for you guys so much. I think this is a, an item for staff and maybe among us. So this is a case where, that, I don't think any of us has a problem with the additional spaces that are on the museum property and now you have them by an easement. So for the rest of us, now we have, this is offsite parking that we were talking about last meeting as being problematic. Just so you know, right now, Mr. Sweeney, it's not a problem for this. Oh, it, I would, I would know that. problem having an issue and it's solved by having an easement. Right. I would know that it was, it was an easement and, yeah, So, so, so we're, we're, we're gonna be okay with this, but we just happened to talk about sure. the same subject though having the parking well removed, what happens if the uh, owner of the property decides to do something else with it? In this case, well, you have an easement. Right. 
So uh, I agree. So I guess this goes to staff. Isn't that the, the, the solution to our problems for requiring offsite parking to make sure owned or not owned, there's an easement on it for parking for a given site? That's one of the solutions. I don't think that's what the um, zoning regulations say right now, but um, we can talk about parking um, that's a separate potentially one. in the future okay. under, under staff All right. report okay. or whatever, because there will be a parking study that's coming out from Mystic and then it'll be up to the Planning and Zoning Commission to look at what our parking regulations say right now and potentially make some changes. Right. Yeah. So all of that are all of that is food for thought and what you're going to do in the future after you review the parking study. Right. No, mm -hmm. I, I agree. And I just I really I'm, I'm sorry to bring it up as part of this. It's just that we have the illustration here of right. a solution that works. And at our last meeting, we couldn't figure out what worked, so we just didn't do it. Right. So maybe all it takes is it's got to have an easement. So we'll, we'll, that's that that's for a later part in the meeting or a different meeting. So right. thanks for bearing with me, but there it is. Otherwise I have absolutely no issue with this project. All right, Thank Barbara, you. do you have any questions? I do. Um, first of all, I, I, I like the way this is coming forward. I appreciate it. Uh, could you just point out to me uh, the access to the apartments I assume it will stay the same. Yeah, there's no change. Um, there's no change whatsoever for the apartment access. In fact, I was there earlier today, um, and I ran into a um, some uh, one of the residents who's in the armed forces who was coming down these steps. So I believe this is the main ac access. Ba Bailey, is there any any details there that I'm missing? No, you come up those stairs on the side and then you come onto this porch that's pre-existing here and there's an entryway to go into an interior stairwell to the third floor or an entryway into the apartment, one of the two apartments on the second floor right there. If you loop around to the right of where your cursor is here, there's sort of two little boxes come down right, right, just a little bit to the right in that right there. That's the entrance into the second apartment on the on the second floor. So all the access is had from the outside on this level. Okay, and it all stays the same. It all stays the same. We're not touching anything on the. Okay. On the all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Barbara? No, that's it. So. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> I think on the uh, parking issue, I think the thing that really works uh, in this application is the fact of proximity. And so the easement and everything, and in fact, it's right next to the building makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> and I think easement could work in a lot of cases, but this is something that will be self-policing because if it's too far away, it's not gonna be good for the customers. And so it wouldn't make sense. Um, but I think this, once again, it shows that we should be open to other creative solutions too. You never know, um, case by case, look at these and see if they make sense. So. But other than that, I don't have any comments. Thanks very much. Thank you. Steve? You have any, Steve, do you have any questions? Um, just no comments? one or two. The, the calculation that was done for the, for the parking, I, I think it was 33 was the number of spots? Yes. And is that staff and patrons? Yes. It's, uh, it, it includes a 20% uh, premium for the employees, the number of employees at the highest shift. Okay. And did that imply the five eighths rule? It, it's now a half, a uh, 50% rule. So yes, it does. Um, the, the 33 spaces would be reduced to 17 spaces under the 50% um, the reduction. So what are they providing or what are they? They're providing 11 spaces when they should be providing a total of 17 spaces. Okay. So that's why they're doing the validation program also. Okay. And that's to pick up essentially six. Well, if three were allocated, then it's like nine more. <laughs> Seven, 17 minus 11 is six. 
Yeah, but then three are already dedicated, right? Oh. Well, cool. that includes the 11. Yeah, that, that's in the 11. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then not being a restaurateur or anything, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'm counting roughly 24 tables and they're all going to be served by the kitchen downstairs? Yes. That's, that's yes. the proposal, yeah. And that's actually kind of an easy um, approach to that. The, you know, this is about, um, you know, a third of, or, or maybe half of the, of the um, service available to like Oyster Club next door when you count the, uh, the, the tree house upstairs. Um, so it's very doable at this size, actually. I've seen that kitchen though. It's pretty small. <laughs> not, yeah, my, yeah. not my, but, uh, not my problem, but yeah, just yeah. curiosity. It's, it's very doable. Yeah. And we don't need to, in fact, we're not really modifying anything on the interior except adding the second bar on the, on the first floor, all the existing structures and the use of the kitchen and the stairwells and the foyer and the back rooms and everything are the walk-in cooler. Everything's exactly the same. All we're doing is essentially adding the bar and putting up decorations. That's about it that we're changing inside. So it's not intent. There's never an intent for patrons to go up and down the stairs. Not so much. It's not meant to go, you know, up upstairs for one activity and downstairs for another. It's just as a seating. You know, it's similar to you know, like many of the restaurants in downtown Mystic that have an upstairs seating area. You're escorted upstairs. There's Via Amelia has that by the drawbridge. Um, Oyster Club has that. Um, uh, Mystic Pizza has that. A number of restaurants in the downtown mystic have this kind of model of an upstairs and a downstairs uh, seating area it's just a good use of space okay and then uh, proposed hours of operation does the uh, bars no. uh, stay open longer and no we're actually more al along the oyster club line where we want to be one of the earlier bars to close at night we don't want to be late night so that's not our that's not our scene it's not my brand position for a real mccoy so this is really meant to be a, a very fine restaurant, and and uh, but it's not like a the late night bar where people are hanging out. Um, this is more of the um, you know cocktail experience, um, really fine food experience. Um, it addresses the the needs of the local community and the and the tourists that are coming to Mystic, and so we really want it to be a fine dining experience and not a late night or noisy kind of thing. You know that's not our not our plan. Okay, that's what. All right, Kevin. I just had a couple questions. Number one on the parking, um, how is that going to be labeled? Is it going to be labeled over each parking space that is designated for this new restaurant? It's actually, there's actually restricted parking signs up right now um, in this area here. Um, and, you know, in, in this area, I know it's on here on the, on the actual retaining wall, there's restricted parking signs. I would assume that we may do the same thing um, for these spaces as well. If it's not already there, I just can't remember. Um, yeah, but I know that signage is already there. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Bailey. All of the 11 sites or uh, parking spaces currently have signage on there. Right. And my only point was, um, are they going to say that they are for the restaurant, specifically uh, the ones that are not for the residential use? Yes, they will say they're for the restaurant. Okay. And is there, I just don't see it. Is there a handicap spot in there? Uh, yeah, right, yes, right there. That's Perfect. it. That's yep. great. Um, my second point is, um, I just wanted to, on a qualitative <clears throat> point, say that I thought this, I, I believe this application is very aligned with the mission of Mystic, and I think you guys did a great job on it. Um, and on the third side, knowing restaurants intimately, and it's part of my business and my private equity, you got too small a kitchen. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> but um, to put out 200 plates, I mean, you got 90 to 100 spots. You get up times two, you got to turn it at least twice. You're going to be a little challenged there. So maybe not the full fine dining, but good luck, Bailey. Thank you very much, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> I just had uh, one item for staff on the parking spaces for the residents. Are they going to be formalized on the on the site plan as they have to be designated? Uh, let's see, proposed. Uh, 
I mean, if you want to say, if you want them to put it out, we can do it as a technical item I if you want them to say. Item. No, I would think it should only be a technical item. We'd be happy to add that to the plan. That's not a problem at all. Or something, just to make sure that because they should have priority, I would think. Too. And they are currently signed that way. Those first three right. of the four sites say that this is for apartment one, this one's for apartment two, and this one's for apartment three. They currently say that now on the signage. Yeah. But I, I just want to make sure that they stay that way because the next owner might want to change it. <laughs> Never know. Hmm? We can add that as a technical item. I don't I see a problem with that. Sure. Okay. Just to make sure that what's there is stays the same. It looks like a pretty good proposal. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions on the uh, on the proposed motion? And I, does the applicant have any concerns with the, with the motion? No, we don't. I think that it's very fair. Okay. Pretty simple. So um, if no one has any concerns and I'll make a motion to approve a site plan SIT 21-07 for the Real McCoy restaurant at 15 Water Street to change retail space to a standard restaurant use with the following modifications. One, the walkway on the north side of the building and the interior floor plan must be kept free from obstruction to allow pedestrian and ADA access from Water Street to the first floor dining room. Signage shall note ADA access to the appropriate doorways. Two, the parking and trash receptacle easement agreement shall be recorded in land records prior to the filing of the final site plan. Three, any staff technical items shall be addressed. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll vote on the motion for uh, site plan SIT 2107. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Mr. Chairman, thank you, member. Welcome to your restaurant. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Water Street's becoming a big, uh, big news site area. Mm -hmm. hmm. Thank you again. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, next, uh, moving on to old business, we have complete streets draft policy. Would staff have anything sure. to say it's Sure. So at your last meeting, you did hear a presentation from Brian Kent about the benefits of complete streets. It's the same presentation the council heard uh, late last year. <clears throat> In your packet is a draft complete street policy for the town of Groton. Uh, the council is interested in your thoughts on it. Um, I've also included in there uh, an appendix from the uh, Southeastern Connecticut Council of Governments Bike and Pedestrian Plan um, that has policies from three other towns, just, just to look at and see what other towns have adopted. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in your thoughts on what the the draft town policy is. Do you see any other items that you think should be included in the town's policy? Um, I don't think the council expects you to wordsmith their draft, uh, but if there are items that you think should be included in this or, or things that should not be in there, we can, we can give those comments to the council. Do any of the commissioners have any Thoughts on this item? Deb, if we don't have those thoughts tonight, can we like take 24 hours and submit them to you? What oh, what's the thought on that? The time. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. If you want to, you know, take time on this and we'll put it on the next agenda, that's why that's we, perfectly no, fine. Why don't, do, why don't we do that? Okay. That's yeah, that that's fine. Um, take a look at the other towns, see if there's anything in there that you like, um, and then we'll go from there. Sure. It's it's a little hard to understand what they are doing with this, I think, from a wording standpoint, not, not the objective, but it would be nice to keep it 
more uh, succinct and down to one page, more like some of the others got a little overboard. I think. Of them are quite lengthy. Um, it's just some things I'll, I'll note from the other plans. Um, so one of them um, references the development of a complete streets manual or a plan that's associated with the policy. Um, one of them has um, a reviewing authority, um, somebody who actually reviews improvements on streets and determines whether or not it's in compliance with the policy. Um, another town, I think Portland, actually has priority areas that they've designated for certain types of improvements or, or areas that really need to have significant improvement to become a complete street. Um, and then there's, <clears throat> excuse me, I think a couple of them address state roads. And while the town doesn't have authority over state roads, it, it recommends strongly that the state follow both their own policy and the and the town's policy. So those are some things to think about when you're looking at, at our draft. Mm. I noticed in some of them, they, they almost reference other plans. Like we have a trail plan, a bicycle plan, and that's yeah. really part of this whole subject. It's more than just existing streets. It's how do you get transportation exactly. around the town? It's really a transportation policy. It, it is, and, and just so that you're aware, the Parks and Rec uh, Director is applying for a grant to update the bike and pedestrian and trail plan, although he's expanding it. Um, he's gonna be calling it a, a community connectivity plan. So mm -hmm. it'll address um, you know, how you go from a sidewalk to a trail to a, to a bike path. Um, and if he gets that money, that it'll be, I think that will really inform this, this policy. That's really what we're doing with this. Maybe right. this just recognizes that plan or the fact that we have a plan like that is what we really want to do. Yep. Hmm? And, and keep this one simple. Right. Hmm. But, but possibly reference it, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, have the details somewhere else because they're really, it's, it's more than just the complete streets. It's, it's total transportation. Mm -hmm. All right. I understand from, from the gist of this is that most of what I see here is it's terms like we'll consider, we'll evaluate, we'll, there's, there's no, here's what you shall do. There's no measured no implementation. Yeah. It just make sure, you, make sure you realize this was the situation and compare mm -hmm. all these things, which I'm all for. Maybe that's the best we can do. Not, Th that's, that's right. Fresh, you know. Right. And Deb, in, in, in your opinion, is this is this really zoning or is this? No, no, no. This is as the planning commission. It is a, a, essentially an 824 type referral. They're interested in, in your thought because, you know, think about it. In the, um, in the subdivision regulations, you have standards for new streets. So, you know, complete streets is definitely something that's, that's something you guys consider. Um, and probably the, the subdivision regulations, if indeed they adopt a complete streets policy, should be consistent with that complete streets policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my only so, other uh, concern slash complaint is streets in my mind are for moving traffic first and foremost, and and then to support ancillary, you know, communication, uh, I mean, uh, transportation, you know, if there's bicycles and, uh, pedestrians, but I mean, a road is primarily for moving cars. And, you know, I see some of the things that are happening in uh, New London, where they took Bank Street and they, I don't know, they, they seem to have taken three quarters of the moving of cars and dedicated it towards other things. And I used to travel that road every day and they made a mess of it in my mind. Um, they could have they could have improved it, but I think they went overboard. And I just want to make sure that there's a balance. And so I like this kind of, you know, partial recommendation, partial, you know, guidelines and not, you know, you shall do the following. Because we do have constraints all over town, you know, in terms of what we can do. Uh, maybe another way to look at it is um, not just use of the streets, but use of the right of way, and and how how other 
other means of travel can use that right of way and what is the best way to design it so that it's, it's safe for pedestrians, traffic, bicyclists. Yeah, but sometimes you designate those areas too. Like I've seen in cities in Europe, they have a sidewalk down the street and a bike lane within the sidewalk. And you don't, as a pedestrian, you better not walk in that bike lane or you'll get run over. <laughs> so. Well, I, I, I would say that uh, the, the right of way, which is used for cars primarily, uh, isn't necessary. I mean, that's not, it doesn't belong to cars. It's designed for cars, but uh, it's, it's about moving humans and how they choose to move is up to them, I would say. Hmm. But so, they you know, we, yeah, we have to be able to accommodate them. Designated zones. Yeah. yeah, no, however it is. I, I had a lot of questions for Mr. Kent last week, but I, it, I couldn't uh, verbalize any of them. <laughs> Mostly how it would work and where all these things would end up, how, you know. Hmm. So I, 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 I would like to think about it some more. Yeah, so we'll put it on, have it on the next next agenda then. Good thoughts. Deb, when you, you Deb, when you, you referred to Portland, you meant Portland, Oregon? No, Portland, Portland. Connecticut, Connecticut. Okay. And, and that's in your packet. That's one of the examples in your packet. All right, anything else on the complete street? So we'll have that on our next agenda. New business, we have new applications. Um, we do have a couple, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we have uh, one Pearl Street, um, a parking lot modification. Um, and we also have six Casino Road, Little Bell Marine. I think you looked at um, a, a variance referral a couple of meetings ago on that one. Okay. And, and before, well, Maybe we can do a quick discussion on uh, the Steen, Steenberg uh, email now rather, rather than getting into the next referrals, which is the filling station, which could be more lengthy. So why don't we do uh, this Steenberg email that's part of your package, which is requesting action taken for uh, the sidewalk. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I have in my notes that uh, October 8th, 2019, that we had a precious memory agreement. Mm -hmm. Does staff have record of that one? I, I do. So just by way of history, this sidewalk agreement was actually signed um, with the original precious memories approval back in 1999. Um, and it the relevant part of it um, is the applicant agrees that in the event that development warranting sidewalks occurs in the vicinities of the precious memory daycare site, the applicant shall appear before the town of Groton planning commission to allow for a determination to be made at that time that conditions have not changed to so warrant installation of frontage sidewalks. Um, <clears throat> so essentially, uh, you both the planning commission and the applicant both agreed that that if development occurred in the area that warranted sidewalks, they committed to, to build sidewalks. Um, the October 2019 approval of additions um, that, that you folks approved, um, one of the modifications or one of the findings was that the sidewalk agreement between the applicant and the planning commission dated January 24, 1999 shall remain in effect for the Sandy Hollow Road frontage only. The Allen Street sidewalk frontage requirements were fulfilled in 2005. So you did review it a couple of years ago um, and determined that it was still appropriate to have a, a sidewalk agreement for Sandy Hollow. But then should we be looking at implementation of the sidewalk or involvement? Well, I, it's, if you think development has occurred that warrants it, I suppose since 2019, then, you probably should invite the owners of Precious Memories to come and, and talk to you about it. Well, we're seeing a lot more 
uh, cars, more traffic on Sandy Hollow Road. It looks like a lot of people get off of the Allen Street exit mm -hmm. and make a left turn mm -hmm. on Sandy Hollow, I assumed, because they can't make a left tur turn uh, right at the exit from the highway. Well, um, Gavin, yeah, I may interrupt a little bit. Um, we have that new development down there across from right. I know. the bottom of Pequot. That was in 2018. That's right. That was approved in 2018. Right now, there are two com almost completed houses there, and I think they're getting ready to clear land for the third one. So that clearly is new development. One other piece of information. Um, the state is also looking at the intersections, the exit ramps and entrance ramps for, 90, for I-95 along um, exit 89. Um, and their study area does come south to Sandy Hollow Road. So they're looking at improvements there that may also include sidewalk construction. Well, you know that I'm in favor of having a sidewalk there. I was said it before when we discussed the ambulance building sidewalks. And, and that's actually I, that's part I of this. Had, I have had the same issue crossing Allen Street, where, you know, you take your life in your hands crossing Allen Street, but it's also there aren't any sidewalks on Sandy Hollow. It's, it's very mm -hmm. unsafe. It's unsafe on, on the Sandy Hollow uh, western part where the, where the ambulance building is. Mm. Do we have any timetable for when the if the state is looking at this and I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I can actually, I'll, I'll see what I can find for you. Uh, we had an initial presentation, um, very preliminary, maybe a month or two ago. And I know they're gonna go to the council in July and, and show them what they're thinking. Um, I'll see if I can get a, you know, a ballpark figure as to when they're thinking about it. I mean, because it is, it's intersection improvements that do include sidewalk construction along the ambulance frontage um, and along Sandy Hollow Road in the area that's shown on Precious Memories site plan to their driveway. Okay. Uh, I would think that the state might do a, a perfectly good job. If they're looking at, at uh, Sandy Hollow Road as part of their study, then they'll probably do okay. But I'd, I'd be surprised to think they were thinking of pedestrians because there's no big pedestrians, there's nobody out there counting pedestrians. It's, it's we, we hear it from Barbara how much, how terrible it is and how impossible it was for me to get my bike across there and it's going to get worse as other developments happen at our uh, there's, outdoor There's definitely center. more traffic Absolutely. at that intersection. It, it's terrible to get out of that intersection. Yeah, I, I, the fear that they'll solve the, without some input from us, they would solve the traffic, the car traffic problem at the expense of the people traffic problem, pedestrians. Gotta be together. <laughs> well, the people traffic will go down as the car traffic goes up because people simply won't walk there anymore. Yeah, it's not. So what we that's want. yeah, but that's not what we want to happen either. No. Well, what? So you can get some more information. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can find from the state. Why don't we leave this or bring it up when you get the information? We'll add that to the to the agenda rather than make a decision tonight, but I, I think it's a good thing. And I, I think what may have also happened is that people use GPS to get to Mystic and a lot of them now will go down Allen Street that way rather than going to Route 27. And that may increase the, the amount of cars around that area also. Yeah. You see despite, a lot more than despite hmm? our efforts to keep the Allen Street sign away from the highway. Yeah, but GPS did you in? Hmm? Yeah. yeah, there's no reason to do that. We're probably a generation, just a barely a generation away from not having street signs because might as well the car with, with GPS. It go, they ignore that. <laughs> Find the short what they think is the shortest route, which isn't always true. All right, so we'll leave that. Another item for a future uh, agenda. And then the next item we have is a referral, uh, or actually not referrals, but the ZBA uh, 
referral for the proposed filling station and car wash in 388 to 420 Long Hill Road. And I assume somebody's going to have comments on this where they want to reduce the. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Setback <laughs> rules down to nothing. Uh, I think it is horrible. I figured that we would have some very strong concerns on this item. Well, just calling it a filling station made me laugh, but I guess that's what the rules say. But I just, I think that whole concept of taking that whole huge area and turning it into a a filling station and a car wash is not what we had envisioned for that area. No, it's not. It's I don't think it meets the POCD of being compat development being compatible with the neighborhood because it really isn't. So, so this is comments on the on the variance on the variance only. <laughs> okay. So, um, so they've you know asked for some setback relief for the drive through um, in a front yard, um, and then as well as the the wall with the fence on the top um, adjacent. The Brookshaven Road. Well, I'm opposed to all of it. <laughs> but can we make a comment to say that that the set reducing the setback was is not uh, what the similar sites along here look like? I mean, they all have a good, and especially the new ones on the north of here, they have a much wider green space from the street to the development, developed part of their property. I mean, it's, what are they asking for? On they're Brookhaven? asking for a on Brookhaven though. Yeah, that back from, I think down to three feet or something. Yeah, it goes from like 30 yeah. to three feet or something ridiculous like that. Okay, yeah. What's the visibility in that area? Uh, let me just share the screen. I've, I've got the packet up. It seems like it's uh, would be tough. Well, you got you do have a, a traffic light at at the street there. Yeah, but you got that wall there too. I think if I were if I oh, were a oh, ooh, that's a nice. Owner, Let's see. Hang on, let me get there. <laughs> from the point of view of a gas station owner, it looks ideal. It's got it's the traffic problem. light, so it's probably pretty good. It's from everything Man else. Is, it's is probably. hard to read because it's sideways. Yeah, I know. Let me just get it here and then maybe I can rotate it. Let's see. All right. So the the this is Brookshaven Road here where my cursor is. This is Culver Avenue. And out here is Long Hill Road. Um, so the drive-through is is here where my cursor is, and you can see when they combine all of these lots, there are three front yards along Brookshaven, along Culver, and along Long Hill. So the one variance that they're asking for is to allow a drive-through in a front yard. Um, the other involves the wall. Um, which is over eight feet in height and so is considered a structure and should meet the setbacks by the zoning regulations. Um, so they've asked for uh, relief from that for the retaining wall plus the fence on top. Altogether, that, that equals, I think it's a 16 feet, Diane, a 16 foot wall. Ten. 10 foot tall ten, retaining wall with a plus six, the six ten. plus the six foot fence on top. And so you add them together and it's essentially a, a 16 foot. Mm. And that is along Brookshaven Road. There are homes right there. Yes. It's all a nice residential area. Yes, they're pleasant little park. residential area. There, there are um, um, homes on the other side of Brookshaven on the lots there. Mm, yes. Right. And yeah. they are, are removing um, a house um, right. here that's along Brookshaven and Culver. Well, can we make, say that 
these reductions are incompatible with the adjacent property, right. development sure. of the adjacent properties is what I think. I'd say those, those, those setbacks are there to prevent exactly this. Mm. Oh, exactly. <laughs> It should remain in place. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you have, it, they're combining lots. So it's not as if those front yards are uh, some fault that is not their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but does it make sense just to make this, send a statement that it, we consider it's incompatible? The reduction in the setbacks are incompatible with the adjacent properties? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That makes sense. Besides, that, why are they putting in a filling station that we're going to have all electric vehicles pretty soon? <laughs> they actually do have a bank of, of EV I know. charging. Yeah. But well, you just wonder why the whether it's got much use. Deb, do you want me to share the um, my screen with the intent of the CN district? Absolutely. There yes. you go. <clears throat> um, okay, can people see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so this is in your zoning regulations, which is the commercial neighborhood district. And the intent of the district is the CN district is meant to accommodate lighter neighborhood serving retail and nodes or gateways that can serve as a smooth transition between commercial and residential uses. It may include one unit dwellings, although though two unit dwellings and multi-unit dwellings are preferred in order to support commercial uses and serve as a buffer to neighboring residential districts. The district is primarily, primarily found along or near the Route 1 corridor, high quality human scale design with an emphasis on pedestrian connections and green spaces desired for development in this district. And it is meant to play a transitional role between the commercial and residential uses. So I that's what- I, That is so an, antithetical to what they're proposing. Well, this is a hard- hard line that's being drawn between the two with Hank's, Hank uh, Steinford would hear, he'd be flipping out. <laughs> well, he, came in, he came into the office when he saw the legal ad. Yeah, I'll bet you he did. He did? He you know, certainly did, <laughs> yeah. But, no. but, but in addition, I mean, the cat, it's a, these are allowed uses. Some are allowed by special permit, but they are allowed uses in the zone. So, so they're not asking for um, you know, a use variance. Right, no. but they're asking to go closer to, yes. you know, setbacks and put drive-throughs in right. front yards. Right. Um, we also, I also, um, there's a draft motion if you wanted to look at something like this, and this is based on the intent of the CN district. So I don't know if you want to say all of this, but. Um, you can read it. To say Bas what? Basically, oh. it says the proposal does not meet the intent and purpose of the CN district, which is to accommodate lighter neighborhood serving retail and nodes or gateways that can serve as a smooth transition between commercial and residential uses. So I basically took the intent of the CN district, if you want to make that type of recommendation. Especially with the emphasis toward pedestrian connections and green space. Though right. I'll have to play a little devil's advocate here, just in terms of the building. I think the building itself is can it'll be it'll be a convenience store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone right. in that neighborhood will love having that there. They just don't want it to be the mass traffic of everything else. So if it were just that little building pushed up closer to Route One with maybe no parking or a little bit of parking or something that's pedestrian access primarily, that they were that probably might work okay, but the drive-through nature of this takes it completely out of what 3.3-1B uh, says. I, and I think, Hal, that's exactly what the intent of that regulation is, is to make something that is more transitional and, and less har a hard 
kind of uh, development that, you know, ends with a wall. Mm. It it's, should be smooth and it isn't. Uh, how, whatever we write, I, I haven't heard the words, but I, I think I would tend to be a little angry. But I don't have any severe words to say. <laughs> well, I said horrible, but I guess that's horrible. not appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would, you know, incompatible or. Uh, but they're not asking for a use for answer, asking for yeah. the setback. That's what I. Well, those setbacks are not, uh, you know, uh, do not. They're not compatible with the intent of the CN neighborhood. Yeah, we'll add that. To, yeah, say they're not compatible and not the, the in with the intent of the uh, the CN. Yeah. Well, maybe it's as simple as saying any reduction in the setbacks would be, as I said, antithetical to the intent of the neighborhood. Yeah. And not appropriate. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, any reduction of the setbacks. Are do you care about the um, drive? Drive-throughs in the front yards. Yeah, but yeah. they're not asking for a variant. We're mixing. Yes, up. they are. Yeah. Asking. No, the drive-throughs would be even. I think more. You know, that just have cars parked running in your front yard. Is Absolutely. Okay, so you're right. Both hard thing to reduction of setbacks and the provision of um, drive-throughs in the front yard is exactly the opposite of what. Yeah. Okay. yeah antithetical to what. 3.3-1B. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Word. So something to that effect, basically. Mm -hmm. In fact, we hardly ever see the drive-throughs in a front yard. Occasionally, I know there was one at the Starbucks, but then there was a lot of natural screening that was put in. I can't think of too many others. Mm. You know, you just Diane. You mentioned a um, like a uh, an eight foot wall, an eight and foot retaining wall, ten every, foot wall, and then a six foot wall on top of that. So ten or foot ten foot retaining wall and a six foot wall on top of that fence. Yeah, six foot fence. Six foot fence on top of that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Is there that much grade change or? Yeah. Um, I was I just on uh, Google Maps and. It didn't look like, you know, going down culvert there. It didn't. You no, know, it's the next. It's you get off culvert. It's uh, what is it, Brooks? Whatever it is. Brookshaven. Brookshaven, Brookshaven right. goes downhill, and most of the that's grade change is kind of downhill. hidden by the house that's there because the house ends up kind of on a hill. Oh, I got you. Yep, yep, yep. So they're gonna essentially level out that property. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yuck. I'm with you, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That'll change the uh, look of that neighborhood. Yeah. It will. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. So, Diane, do you have that um, the document that you said is the proposal to send back? Can you put that up? The, that you, you, you're asking for to send back? No. no, the motion you read, Diane. No, the motion you read. Sorry. Oh, do I? It's not. A, it's not up right now. No, no it's just no. on CN. Scroll down. Three point three. Oh. One. Okay. Your screen sharing. Stop sharing. This was my. Do you see it now? No. no. Not screen sharing at all. Yeah. I lost it. Sorry. So I don't think that was in the packet. I, I don't know. No, it, it wasn't. Okay. Well, it wasn't in the packet, but do you? Do I you think what a... you guys said um, is pretty pretty much consistent um yeah if you can put the words together what 
any reduction of setback setbacks and, or the provisions of drive through in the front yard is not something with the intent of the CN no, district. Not compatible, yeah, not, compa compatible not consistent. Or consistent with the orderly okay. development. No. <laughs> yeah, it was not consistent with the, the objectives of the CN district. Right. And and not compatible with the the existing neighborhood. Okay. Hmm? And doesn't offer a smooth transition. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. We can put some words like that, the thoughts in them. Yeah, that neighborhood would see that wall every time they come out. Yeah. Hmm. They are proposing putting some landscaping in front of it, but not enough. Yeah, but they only got three feet to put, <laughs> three foot width to put landscaping in. Yeah, their sketch sort of shows more, but it's not what the plan shows. No. So, so Deb, do you have that? <laughs> well, can you throw it out or? Hmm? I mean, you got the thoughts down, right? Right. Basically, it's not consistent with the intent of the CN district yeah. and yep. it doesn't offer a smooth transition between to the neighborhood or something like right. that. Yep. The existing neighborhood, yeah. Or existing development. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can send that as a. Our comment. To... That's strong enough. Uh, it's up to you guys. No, I don't know how. Do you recommend denial? Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you want to put that in to begin with? The, we okay. recommend denial of the, and then put this in. But we said that already. <laughs> We indicated, but we didn't say it. <laughs> Beating around the bush. Better to say it. It's a good idea to say it. No, right? yeah, no, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. We, we... Okay, we got that. All right. It's actually, kind of a shame because it looks like it would be a nice looking building. Yep. Yeah. Just smaller. Well, they, could not, they could modify it though, I think. Oh, yeah. Redesign, sure. that's what it needs. Yeah. They don't create If they don't have to have a big car wash and stuff in there, the, the building could be closer to the street mm. or moved around. They just want the convenience store. Well, a big part of their problem is the need, their desire for the drive through. Yeah. Yeah, but you got it's, you know, and that's a that would really ruin the neighborhood and the traffic on the road too. Maybe they need to just knock down a couple more buildings to the to the south. Um, I don't see that. All right, so we can move on. So you'll get something off to the ZBA then? then. Yes. Yep. All right, commission reports, report of chair. I have nothing uh, else to report on. Report of commission. I know Kevin had something he wanted to bring up. I do, yep. So um, it's going to take, take about 30 seconds to set up and then I'll um, either we'll make a motion or we'll discuss it a little bit. Um, and so the first point is, you know, I'm the newest person on this commission and I don't have the subject matter expertise in what I've seen from you as a group, frankly, has been terrific. And this is regarding um, the Mystic Oral School. And I've also seen the criticism of the staff of Groton in my dealings with the staff have been nothing but exemplary. They've been insightful. They've been efficient. Um, they have, um, have been honest in, in, in their appraisal. But as we go through this every two weeks, listening to the public comment on the Mystic Oral School, 
and understand my background, it was with, you know, the world's largest corporation as far as development lifecycle with Microsoft. Uh, you know, I was part of building fabs, the biggest factories in the world, as far as process is concerned. And by the town council of the town of Groton, giving this to the planning and zoning commission in such an incomplete fashion that without basic documents, without any apparent discovery phase, other than um, a little bit of work, in my opinion, as far as the Mystic Oral School, in missing out on just a tremendous amount of outreach, the ability for the Planning and Zoning Commission within our mission to take what they have given us is incomprehensible to me for us to address this. And I'd like to either move or discuss turning this back, the Mystic Oral School and the Bluffs, back to the town council for them to do a much better discovery phase and work rather than telling us at this time that we need a text document as what to what we're living to work with. So in a summation, that's it. But I, I don't think the council has given us anything <laughs> really. So yeah. my point, so my point is, so let me get specific. My point is for us to hear public comment on an incomplete project that has been, you know, within our sphere for us to listen to, that's not our mission within the Planning and Zoning Commission. It's up for the town if they want to answer these questions because the, the citizens are energized in a positive way and they're looking for transparency. It's up for the town council to answer those questions, not the Planning and Zoning Commission to, to handle this public comment that by our mission, we're not supposed to deal with. So, so you've I, got, you guys are really getting the brunt of, of the public comment, mostly because, because the you, have a public, you have a public, <laughs> yeah, exactly, you have a public communication section yeah. on, your, on your agenda. So you are getting a lot of comments that are, are things that you don't deal with. And um, really, you don't have the answers to these questions. But frankly, you're the, you're the only people who are listening. So I think that's why you're getting these questions. Um, the town council has signed a development agreement with, with Respler Homes. I mean, they've, they've signed an agreement. That agreement doesn't bind this commission in any way, shape, or form. And it, it says that in, in the development agreement. But in order for a development to happen, a redevelopment to happen on this property that is not just a standard subdivision of two acre lots, which is allowed by zoning right now, um, as well as a couple of other things that are allowed in the RU zone, mm -hmm. small in nature. I mean, a, either a, a, a zoning map change has to happen or a zoning text amendment has to happen. And that is something that you deal with. And the process that we've been talking about up to this point is do a text amendment that essentially lays out a process for a developer to come in and make an application for a development. You're not designing the development. You're, you're not approving a development with this text amendment. You are just laying out um, a permitting path for somebody else to follow if they want to propose a development on there. And, and that's the stage that we're at right now. You guys are, are looking at, I mean, you've, you've looked at a couple of drafts of a proposed text amendment. You've given us some feedback as to whether or not you think, you know, this section is right for this area, that is the density right or the buffers right? Um, and, and, and we're trying to incorporate that into get another draft of a text amendment. Um, but that's, I mean, that's your role in this is, is to, you know, if it is to, in order to um, allow a redevelopment of the Mystic Oral School property with the buildings that are there, that don't need zoning right now, um, is to develop a text amendment. And then from there, a developer would do a proposal for, you know, whatever it is you lay out. You know, in this case right now, we're talking about doing a master plan and a zone change and then site plan approval. Um, and those are all individual applications that Respler Homes would be responsible to, to make and to make their case to you. Um, 
but but yeah. you know, Kevin, I, you're so right. You guys are just getting the brunt of all these questions that you. Well, so I don't care the brunt. My point is, it's uh, we're maligned as far as the process is concerned. I'm just going to talk about process. So you can't hand me the next step of what of a text amendment, which I'm supposed to do, if you don't have a package that to me allows us to do that portion of the job. All of us will, will do it. I love to listen to these citizens. They're energized, you know, but we, we don't have a package that allows us to develop a text amendment. And I believe there are people within this town that believe we do. And my point is within the process, it is broken at this point. And then you, you as a town council, if you're the one that has given this to us as a planning commission, it's a misaligned mission of what we do. And we're very willing to do a text amendment You've got to do all the rest of the, the work as far as basic documents, much more discovery before you hand this off to us to develop a text document. That's my point. Well, the town, to yeah, go ahead, Jeff, sorry. The town oh. council has not given us any direction at all. I think it came from the, originally we knew that the town is interested in developing this piece of property. Right but it's no formal direction. And that's came through, uh, I guess, through the town staff, probably from the town manager down to, to uh, come up with uh, a set of regulations for redeveloping. And it first started out as redeveloping or development of reuse of existing buildings. And I think we felt that the town that this property was a big piece of property and that was probably more significant than the fact there were was an existing building on it that were, it's not like us say as the Groton Heights school where that people wanted to develop as a as a building this is really developing as a property so we've been given a rough draft of it and gone through a couple of revisions of it. And that's what we're trying to do. Not necessarily to say that the draft would support or not support the proposal that was signed by the council. It's two separate things. Yes. Hmm? It's totally it's separate. Yeah. Um, to Deb, um, a question to Deb Jones. Um, We've done this before, where a developer has come in, needed a zone change, and had a proposal. And I'm just wondering why it's it's not functioning in the same manner. Um, why are we, you know, under the guise of you know that there is a developer out there having to change this? Normally, we probably wouldn't be doing anything, right? I mean, if that if that agreement hadn't been signed, we wouldn't be a Right. even talking about that property, right? Well, yes, because I think going way back in a long time, the town has wanted to have some development of this state-owned property. So, a lot, you know, this goes back many, many years. Yeah. Hmm? Yep. This, yeah, this I mean, country, hmm? I, I, initially, we were, so. the thought was to redevelop the Mystic Education Center buildings. Those buildings don't, I mean, they don't meet the, the RU80 zoning. And so it was, there was a recognition that in order to allow a redevelopment up there, up there um, and, and maybe an expansion, um, I, the, the zoning text needs to be written to show how you get an approval. Um, you know, if this were not a state property, I mean, that, that's, Another wrinkle in this is that the state owns this thing, and they're they're they they're selling it to Restler. They've got a purchase and sale agreement. Um, typically, if if we had you know just a privately owned piece of property that was like this, I mean, we might the developer would be proposing this text amendment and and would probably be coming to you informally. Do you think how about this? Do you like this before actually submitting an application? Um, and that's, you know, typically what might have happened in the past. This is, you know, it's it's a, a much larger project and it's complicated by the development agreement that the council signed. Um, 
that yeah, again correct. does not bind you guys to you know the, the vision that's laid out in there um yeah, yeah and the fact it's state property i think really is what confuses or makes it messy if it were not state-owned property it would be easy but we want i think the town wanted to take charge to make sure the state didn't do something that wasn't compatible with what the town wanted. I, th I think that's part of it. And mm -hmm. also part of it is to try to avoid, you know, what happened in Waterford and what happened mm -hmm. in Norwich in terms of, you know, the state just oh, letting yeah. the buildings yeah. deteriorate to the point that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's part political and part, <laughs> I guess, what uh, is realistic to them. I wish I that more of the uh, previous speakers from the public were actually online now and listening to our conversation. They're, they're it, still here. There are a few. There are a few. Yeah. About half as many as there had been. And I think a lot of the people that have asked questions would have profited by this discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so just as a, a sidebar here, I mean, I, you guys had asked us to develop a frequently asked questions um, sheet to put up on the website. Well, mm. I've now got, you know, three and a half pages of questions um, and I've, I'm starting on the answers. So, so that will, will go up, I hope in the next couple of weeks that, that encompasses everything that you guys have heard for the last, you know, 12, 13, 14 months to try to at least get those answers out there. Um, I wouldn't think you have to answer every one of them. Just, no, you know, the no. top 10. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, some of it is like, sorry, ask the council, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not a planning and zoning issue, well, yeah. um, but, but, you know, laying out where are we in this process, that, that, that kind of thing. Um, and, and I also want to say, I know a number of the folks, the people who are attending this meeting have their hands up. This is not the time um, that the commission can and hear your thoughts. That's only under public communications. I'm sorry. I, and if anybody wants to call me in the morning, that's fine too. I can I can help out and answer questions as best I can. Or a person um, can write. They can write. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Write it down. Send it to us. Exactly. Um, so in terms of the next steps here, we're we're trying to come up with a date, a couple of dates, probably in June. Um, to continue the discussion on, on the text amendment. We're working around some vacations um, for staff and for the consultant. And it will be a special meeting because John Reiner needs to be here. And typically on Tuesday nights, he's over at the council. So it, it won't be at a regular meeting, but we'll figure out some dates and, and do a doodle poll um, but, to but just have that just, one item. <laughs> just establishing that as a key event as a date, I think will answer a lot of the concerns the public has, that it's not so mysterious to them as they, what they see now, it's all unknown. That it's the fear of the unknown gets everybody upset. Right, and I, and I think Jeff, that's true. And the point is no one really has this plan what this life cycle development of this project is going to be. It's very amorphic, there's, there's no precision to it right now. So you get all these questions, which are good questions, and a lot of times we don't have the answers, but the fact is, is that the, the development cycle has not been laid out. And if it was, I think the townspeople would understand it a great deal more. Um, not that we would have more answers because I fully understand what our role is, but the answer is what's coming up. And I think some of the expectation of the citizens is very different exactly what you said, Jeff. Mm -hmm. You know, So that's my final thoughts. It's, Instead of emotion, those are my thoughts for a commission report. Tonight. And, and I and I think because the way this this project is progressing, you know, most of the the people who are are speaking to you are asking you know very concrete, detailed questions. What happens to my well when the blasting happens? That, that kind of thing. And we, while we generally know you know how we can deal with it, the developer hasn't even gotten there yet because. He doesn't have a regulation that is telling him what he can do. So all he's got is this, this pretty picture that he keeps showing of, you know, a sort of a village and parking garages and, and whatever. 
but he's not going to put any more money into the actual details of that until he knows what's going to be allowed on the site, which brings us back to the text amendment. Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin, thank you for bringing yeah. that up. I think that this commission and a large part of the public are, are equally frustrated, but I think it's a matter of just waiting a little bit and hopefully some of these answers get answered. Uh, mm -hmm. Questions get answered. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we have to, yeah, resolve some big major issues have to be determined and finally. Frustrating though. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's very complex, that's why. Uh, does anyone else in the commission have anything to bring forth tonight? All right, report of staff. Do staff have anything else to report on? No, just to note the May 27 Mystic Parking meeting. Um, yes, everybody. It is a Zoom meeting. It's limited to 100 people. So if you really do want to attend, you probably should register sooner than mm -hmm. later. It, and it is going to be recorded. So if you do miss it, you know, you can catch it on YouTube the next day. All right. If no one has anything else, uh, then I'll, uh, uh, oh, did you have? Oh, Joe, I just wanted it, in that Zoom meeting. Will there be a, an opportunity to ask questions? Yes. It will. Okay, so you would not be able to get asked questions if you decided. To just Zoom. That's that's true, but I mean, we can certainly accommodate it after the meeting if you still have questions. You know, we still have a relationship with the consultant, okay. and we can get to the answers. Thank you kindly. All right, so I'll make a motion then for adjournment. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Al, I give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, long meeting. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Bye now.